things that are impossible, impossible, impossible with man are possible with God. The things that are impossible with your friends, impossible with your mom, impossible with your dad, impossible with your family members, impossible with your boss, impossible with the people that are around you that spend time with you. The things that are impossible with your wife, with your kids, the things that appear to be impossible with people, impossible to your pastor, and impossible to your grandmother, the things that appear to be impossible to everyone around you but you, those that believe, the things that appear to be impossible with men are possible with God. Somebody say, are possible with God. Are no doubt possible with God. It is no doubt possible with God. Come on, Sister Tracy. Come on, Brother Virgil. Today, come on, Professor Gaynor. Today, we are going to get an understanding of possibilities. We're going to get an understanding of possibilities. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Possibility. Something that may happen. Possibility. The likelihood. The probability. The prospect. Possibility is the hope. Possibility is the feasibility that it may come to pass. Possibility means there's a little bit of doubt. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. We're moving from possibilities to realities. We're, we're moving out of any kind of doubt. In the courtroom, they say with beyond a shadow of a doubt, beyond the shadow. See, when you go to court, they want you to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that they are guilty. Not that they're innocent. Uh, if there is a shadow of a doubt, then they don't have to go to jail. If there's a shadow of a doubt, then they're innocent until proven guilty proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. And the problem is that we get stuck in the possibility. We get stuck in the possibility and it starts moving to the um, danger or the hazard of risk of losing it all. See, when you spend too much time in possibility, then you feel like you're at risk. You feel like you're in hazardous territory. You feel like you're not going to make it. You feel like you're in danger of losing it all, of it not coming to pass. See, when you spend too much time in possibility, you can't even believe the reality. You can't even believe that even if God said it, that settles it. You can't believe because God told me so. That is why. Possibility. Possibility. I need you to move from probability. I need you to move from likelihood. I need you to move from, I got a good prospect. I need you to move from hope. I need you to move because you're in the risk. You're, you're part of the risk. You're part of the danger zone. Uh, you're part of that. You're, you're part of that. And you don't want to be stuck in possibility. You want to get to reality. You want to get to likelihood. You want to get to a whole nother level. You want to level up, level up, level up. You want to get to another level. But how can you when you're stuck in the possibility? So I'm going to take you to a sister of mine who was stuck in a possibility. This sister of mine that I'm going to tell you about, she's in the Bible. She, she's in the Bible. And the Bible gives us real life, real life circumstances, real life 
happenings. Yeah, because this happened to her. And so she's an example for us. See, it happened to her. And she's an example for us. It might have happened to me, but I'm an example for you. I know what happened to you is an example for me. So my sister, she was very beautiful. She was amazingly beautiful. She was so beautiful, everybody looked at her. Even when she was old, honey, she was beautiful. She was a princess. Her name means princess. She was a beautiful, beautiful princess, exotic, look, exotic looking and fine, fair and beautiful, wonderful, easy on the eyes, where everyone's head turned and looked at her. She was beautiful. She had possibilities beyond possibilities, beyond possibilities. She was great. She was honorable. She was noble. She was amazing. But somewhere in her walk, she got stuck in her possibilities. Somewhere in her walk, she entered into a dangerous zone of I can't believe it. She entered into a danger zone, a hazardous zone of it's not going to happen. It's past time. She was looking at her clock and her clock was ticking and it got past the time of natural birth. It, it, her clock got past the time when everyone around her was having grandkids and great grandkids. She was still trying to be in the land of possibilities, but she entered into a hazardous place of it ain't going to happen. She entered into a hazardous place of, let me help God out. Does anybody, is, is anybody tried to help God out? Is anybody over there, anybody listening to me, tried to help God out? Because you thought you were too old. You thought you had gone too far. You thought you had digressed so far off the path. You, you got too far away. You, you thought that you were going to be married at this point in your life, but it hasn't happened. You thought you were going to be here, but it didn't happen. You, you got confused and you got stuck because your possibility didn't fit in your timetable. Your possibility didn't fit in how and what you wanted it to. Your possibility didn't look like how you dreamed it would be. Your possibility didn't look like how you wanted it to be. Your possibility hadn't formed into your reality yet. So I'm talking about a princess. I'm talking about a very, very beautiful woman. And when we go to Genesis, we go to Genesis and we look at the promise. We go to Genesis, Genesis chapter 18 and verse 9. We go to Genesis chapter 18 and verse 9. And the word of God reads, Then they said to him, Where is Sarah? Yes, Sarah's name was changed from Sarai, princess, means princess, to Sarah, which means noble woman. And in the word in Genesis 18 and 9, it said, where is Sarah, your wife? So he said, here in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old well advanced in age. And Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Sarah had advanced the age of childbearing. And we're going to stop right there. See, when the angel said, <laughs> when the angel said that he was going to return to her the time of life, 
That meant that she was going to begin ovulating again and that she would have a period again. Sarah was barren. Sarah was not able to conceive. Sarah was so beautiful though, and, but she was not able to fulfill her destiny of giving birth. Sarah got stuck in the possibility. She got into a hazardous place of saying, I need to help God along with this because I'm beyond my childbearing years. I want to make my husband happy. I, I want my greatest dream fulfilled, and that is to give birth. And I need this reality. I need this reality. Sarah got in such a hazardous place in such a danger zone she didn't even realize it that she had lost hope that she lost her feeling that likely it could happen this year likely it could happen next year likely it could happen this decade maybe maybe it's gonna happen in this decade maybe maybe it's gonna happen So in verse 12, Genesis 18 and 12, the word of God reads, therefore, Sarah, Sarah laughed, <laughs> Sarah laughed, <laughs> he's talking nonsense, whatever, no way, Sarah laughed within herself, this was what Sarah was thinking, there's no likelihood, there's no possibility, within herself saying, after I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? So Sarah had so much disbelief. She couldn't believe that God would bless her womb. She couldn't believe that God would even bring her menstrual cycle back, her, her life back in her. She couldn't believe that she would be able to breastfeed her child. She could not believe that there was really a possibility of having this now. I'm old. I'm older than old. People are have, have had their children. They've had their children have had children. Those children have had children, and I'm still sitting here old and without my promise. It's past my time of what I think my promise is long gone. With God, all things are possible. With man, it seems impossible. It seems improbable. With God, all things are possible. Sarah laughed. Sarah laughed within herself. <laughs> she thought, no way. Some of you who are watching me right now are saying, <laughs> I hear her talking. It, it's not going to happen for me. I, I don't see how God is going to do this. Remember, God is the worker of miracles. If you don't, you can't work your own miracle. Let me help you. You can't work your own miracle. Come on, somebody. Let me get closer. You can't work your own miracle. So you're sitting back saying, there's no way this can happen. And God is saying, yes, I said it. And that settles it. God is in the in heaven saying, hello, I said you were going to conceive. I said that you were going to birth a nation. I said that I'm going to make you great. I said that I'm going to make you sought out. I said that you would author many books. I said that you would have that great office in the uh, skyscraper, that you would have that business. God said that you would have that house. God said that you would have that husband. Get out of your hazardous place, your hazardous zone, your danger zone. You have allowed your possibility to move into impossibility. And God is saying on today, we're moving from it's possible, question mark, question mark, question mark, to its reality, to it's about to manifest. 
It's about to fall into my hand. I'm about to open that next door. I'm about to achieve. I'm about to receive. I'm about to get there. It's about to manifest. I'm about to level up. Sarah laughed. Sarah had been in such a state that she could not believe the promise. God promised you that settled. God promised you. Don't let take your watch off because your time is not like God's time. Your ways are not like you, God's ways. Your thoughts are not like God's thoughts. Take off your watch. No, God said you will travel to different continents. God said that business that you keep trying to start but never finish, you will finish. God said it and that settles it. With man, it's impossible. We are not leaning and depending on man. We are leaning and depending on God. You are not leaning and depending on man. You are leaning and depending on God. Let me say that one more time. We are leaning and depending on God. God said it, that settles it. With man, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Sarah laughed. We're in Genesis 18 and 12. Sarah, noble woman, this noble woman, this woman that had gone through everything, this woman who gave her maidservant to her husband so that he could birth a child, this woman that thought, well, maybe, maybe I'm not barren. Maybe it's Abraham. Let, let, me, let me see. Is it, my, is it me or is it him? She gave her maidservant, maybe she was thinking, you know, I'm going to give him um, Hagar and maybe they won't have a baby because maybe it's not me, maybe it's him. But when she gave her maidservant to Abraham, she found out it wasn't him, it was her. She was barren. That took her down a whole nother notch. That took her down a whole nother level. He has conceived a child with somebody else. And I, I had something to do with that. Don't let your possibility, getting stuck in your possibility, cause you to make the wrong decision. Don't get stuck in your possibility and you're thinking it's never going to help happen. And I need to help God out. Don't let getting stuck in your possibility cause you to go in the wrong direction. What God has for you is for you. With God, all things are possible. Sarah was laughing at her promise. Sarah was laughing at her promise. Don't laugh at God. Don't laugh at your promise. Don't laugh at your destiny. Don't laugh, laugh at your predetermined destination. Don't laugh at what God said. God said it. That settles it. Throw away. Take off your watch. Throw it away because your time is not like God's time. Don't get stuck in your possibility. Getting stuck in your possibility puts you in a hazardous zone, in a danger zone, in a sinning zone, in a, in a zone of woe is me, in a zone of depression. Don't get stuck in your possibility thinking it's not ever going to happen for me. Get out of that stuck place of it's not going to happen for me. God said it. That settles it. God, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Huh. She laughed and she said, after I have grown old, after all that I've been through, after being ridiculed, after being talked about, after all those years, year after year after year, God, all these 90 years, all these years, she laughed. Shall I have pleasure now? Now shall I have the pleasure of the promise? Now 
Can I have the pleasure of the promise now? Now? Is, 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 is it my turn now to have the pleasure of the promise? Can I have the pleasure of the promise? Mm. 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 Shall I have the pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? saying, shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Genesis 18 and 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, at the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life. And Sarah and Sherry and Virgil and Tracy and Red and Bianca and Gaynell and Billy and Craig and Judy and Cynthia and James and Bianca and Sarah shall have a son, shall give birth, shall give birth to your dream, shall realize your dream, shall give birth to a nation, shall realize it, and, and Crystal shall give birth to that, and Crystal shall give birth to Jedi, and Crystal gave birth to Jedi. Beyond my barren years, I received the promise. I moved out of possibility and moved into reality. When doctors said no, God said yes. Uh, you're looking at someone who reached reality. You're looking at someone who prayed and fasted for years and years. You're looking at someone when doctors tried to give me a hysterectomy. At 27, you're, you're looking at the one that has had the impossibility. You're looking at the one that sat in the midst of the danger zone of, of doubting God. I, I sat in a hazardous zone of depression. I, I sat in a hazardous zone of hopelessness. I, I sat in the hazardous zone of it can't possibly be. It's not for me. I, I sat in the hazardous zone of holding back and, and laughing at God. I sat in the hazardous zone thinking that it could not be me, thinking that no way it can't be me, and moving into the reality of it is me, uh, in the reality of being able to hold my son, in the reality of being able to birth my own son from my own body. The reality of what God promised me. And I'm telling you today that you can move to the reality of what God promised you. I'm telling you today that you can move to the reality of what God promised you. And it is so because God said it so. I ask you to take away your time clock. Throw away your watch. And trust God. I'm telling you, throw away your clock and trust God. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, at the appointed time, don't let your words and don't let your actions stop you from getting to your promise. Don't let your words and your actions stop you from getting to your promise. Don't let your words and your actions get you in a place, get you stuck in a place like the prodigal son. He got stuck in a place where he thought 
Surely I can I got I I can't live like this. Don't get in a hopeless, hazardous danger zone where you might get lost in that place of possibility and thinking that there's no reality. Sarah laughed at the angel. Sarah laughed at the angel. She said, after I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? My husband's old and I'm old. Genesis 18 and 13, and the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh, saying, shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Sarah did not believe it anymore. And I'm here today to pull the belief out of your belly. I'm trying to pull the belief back up into your heart. I'm trying to pull the belief that you buried and I'm trying to pull it back into your mind. I need you to have a mindset of possibilities. I I'm trying to pull belief out of the dirt, out of the grave where you buried it. And I'm trying to pull the belief and put it back in the forefront of your mind. I need you to believe better. I need you to believe better. I need you to believe more. I need you to believe that you can. I need you to believe that God can and that God will. Genesis 18 and 14 says, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, Jesus. Whew. And Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it. She denied that she laughed. She denied that she had doubt. She denied that she was in a hazardous place. She denied that she couldn't believe God anymore after 80 years 70 years of hoping. She denied that she couldn't believe God anymore. She said, I did not laugh in Genesis 18 and 15, for she was afraid. She was afraid of God doing away with her. She was afraid. And he said, no, but you did laugh. I know you think that God can't do it. I know that you're standing up and you're saying, I know God can't do it. And I'm trying to tell you, he can. I'm begging you to believe better. I'm begging you to believe in God again. I'm telling you, I'm asking you to trust God again. Trust God again. Trust God again. Trust God again. Go with me to Colossians. Colossians 4, and I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm pleading for you. The ones that have given up, trust God again. A Colossians 4. This is what will help you in your despair. This will, is what will help you in your danger zone of doubt. This is what will help you out of your hazardous way. The word says that we're overcome by the word. The word. The word of our testimony were overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So I plead the blood of Jesus over you and I plead the blood of Jesus over the word, the words that are coming out of your mouth, the words that you affirm. I need you to get your affirmations together. I need to get, I need you to get your speech together. I need you to get your belief together. I need you to dig it up, dig up Dig it up. Dig up the promises. Dig up your dreams. Dig it up today. Colossians 4, verse 2, it says, continue earnestly in prayer. What will bring you out of a state of hazard is prayer. What will bring you out of a state of doubt is prayer. What will connect you to heaven, what will connect you to God is prayer. It says continue earnestly in prayer. Don't give up in prayer. Your mind might have given up. Your mind might have gave up, but don't give up in prayer. Jesus, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. 
Thank God for your marriage. Thank God for your business. Thank God for your husband. Thank God for your son. Thank God for your daughter. Thank God for your wife. Thank God for your millions. Thank God for your trucks. Thank God for your um, fashion line. Thank God for your beauty line. Thank God. Thank God for your salon. Thank God for your barber shop. Thank God for your mechanics school. Thank God for your beauty school. Thank God for your coaching business. Thank God for your clients. Thank God for your customers. Praying, believing that the promises of God are yes and amen. Thanking God and believing that the promises of God are yes and amen. Thanking God. Verse 3, Colossians 4 and 3. Meanwhile, praying also for us. Pray for the ones that look like they've lost all hope. Pray for the ones that look like they are in despair. Pray for the ones that you see the potential in. That you see the possibilities in. Pray for us. Pray for us, Minister Latoya. Pray for us that God would open to us a door for the word. You're here today because you needed to hear this word. You're here today because your possibilities are about to become reality. You're here today because it's time for you to dust off your dreams. You're here today because with man, it may be impossible. They may have told you it was impossible, but I need you to believe better because God said with all things, it's possible with God. With all things, miracles, signs, and wonders happen with God. All things are possible with God. God opened the door for us. God opened the door for your word. God opened the door for us to speak the mirror, the ministry, the mysteries of Christ. God opened the door so that we can prophesy one to another. God opened the door so that we can speak those things that are not as though they were to the ones that need to hear it, to the ones that need to be inspired, to the ones that need to be encouraged, to the ones that need to be pulled out of depression, to the ones that need to be pulled off the streets, to the ones that need the word, to the ones that need to understand the mysteries of Christ, to the ones that need God, to the ones that need Christ in places that we ain't never thought that God should be in, in the uh, shampoo bowl at the beauty salon, in the barber shop, in the mechanics while they're under the car. God needs to speak to that mechanic while they're in the school. God needs to speak to that school that um, student, when they're serving and they're a waitress and they're having a bad day and God needs to speak to that waiter or that waitress, that they need to believe better. To speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in chains. I can't stop believing and I can't stop telling and I can't stop hoping, and I can't stop loving, and I can't stop. I'm chained to this. And verse 4 says, that I may make it manifest also as I ought to speak. I got to speak hope where there are hopeless people. I got to speak love where there are people that feel that they're unloved. I, I got to do this. You got to do this. We got to do this. It's too much going on. There's too much hate. There's too much hurt. There's too much anger. There's too much pain. And somebody's got to see the Christ in you. They got to understand that the mysteries are that lie within you need to be heard. You've got to speak it. We've got to speak it. We've got to reach them. It's a good time to share. It's a good time to sow hearts. It's a good time to spread this word because somebody is sitting at home hopeless thinking that they're not even thinking that God can make it. 
come to pass. They're not even thinking that there is any way out of the situation that they are in. They're not even thinking that there is hope. Even the ones in the church are thinking there's no hope. Colossians 4 and 5 says, walk in wisdom. Walk in wisdom toward those who are outside. They might be outside today, but bring them in so they can be inside tomorrow. Walk in wisdom toward those who are outside redeeming the time. God is a redeemer. God is a redeemer. It's time. It's time. It's time for you to get out of your four walls. It's time for you to get the word out. However it is, it's time for you to walk through the open doors that God has for you. Your destiny is calling you and it's time for you to believe better. It's time for you to think better. It's time for you to get out of, I ain't going to do that. Uh-uh. That ain't for me. It's, it's time out for that. Dust off your dreams. Dust off your promises. With God, all things are possible. I know you thought it was going to happen at a certain time and a certain day on your birthday and before you turn 40, before you turn 50, before you turn 60. I thought it was already going to happen. But guess what? Sarah was 90 when it happened for her. Sarah was 90 when it happened for her. Uh, Abraham was a hundred when it happened for him. Sarah got 30 good years with her son before she died. I don't know how many good years you're going to have living in your reality, but I know you can get into your reality. It's time for you to move out of the possibility of it can't be. I don't think so. That impossibility state, that hazardous state. And I need you to move into it's coming. It is. It is so. I, I see it. I see it in a distance. My destiny is running down, running me down. My blessings are running me down and they're taking me over. My blessings are running me down and they're taking me over. My blessings are running me down and they're taking me over. My blessings are running me down and they're taking me over. Your blessings are running you down and they're taking you over. God has more for you. Stop looking at your four walls. Stop looking at your desk where you're sitting now. That's not your destiny. That's just a part of the steps that God has ordered for me, for you, for we. Where you are now is not the end. Where you are now is not your promised land. It's just a part of the journey. So don't quit on your story. Don't quit. Don't, don't stop at this chapter. There are more un- There are more concealed chapters. God knows your future. God knows your destiny. God is taking you because he's why he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's taking you from chapter to chapter to chapter. Be ready to embrace your next chapter. Be ready to embrace the promises of God. Be ready for your destiny. Be ready for your future. Be ready. Be ready. Be also oh ready. Be ready. Be oh so ready because why God is redeeming the time. Colossians 4 and 6 says, let your speech always be with grace. Don't count people out with your speech. Don't count people down and out with your speech. Let your speech always be with grace. Don't count yourself out with your speech. Don't count yourself out. Don't count the promises of God out with your own speech. Laughing. At what God said your destiny is. Don't laugh at yourself. Let your speech always be with grace. Seasoned with salt. You are the salt of the earth. There's more for you. That you may know how you ought to answer each one. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. 
it's not over until God says it's over. The fat lady don't have nothing on God. Don't laugh. Don't give up till God says it's over. I pray that this word blessed you. I pray that you have hope to get to your reality. Start speaking it. Start believing better. Start believing bigger. Start believing that it's coming to pass. I pray this word blessed you. Hmm. With man, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word on today. We thank you for your people. We ask you, God, to cover us, to bless us, to keep us. Father God, you said the steps of a good man are ordered by you. Order our steps. Help us to get in place and position for the promises, for the fullness that we won't get stuck in the possibilities, but Lord God, move us in our reality step by step by step by step by step in Jesus' name. Lord God, bless your people's coming in and going out. Lord God, I ask that you cover each one um, in the blood of Jesus. Satan tries to come immediately to steal the word that was sown. But Lord God, let this word be sown on good ground. Let it be sown in the hearts in the minds of your people. Lord God, let this word manifest greatness. Lord God, let this word manifest inventions. Lord God, let this word manifest innovation. Lord God, let this word manifest um, businesses and entrepreneurship and families and marriages. Lord God, let this manifest generational blessings and generational legacy. Lord God, let this word block, break, and destroy every generational curse in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we bind the impossibilities. We bind doubt in the name of Jesus. We bind depression in the name of Jesus. We bind it in the name of Jesus. We ask that hope will grow. We ask, Lord God, that you will have your way. Lord God, we thank you for healing on today. Lord God, we thank you for the brokenness, is the shattered, the ones that have been shattered. We thank you, Lord God, that you can put them back together again, that you can replace what was shattered and replace it with what is made whole. Can I be made whole? God, make them whole in the name of Jesus. Cause wholeness to come about in the name of Jesus. Bring healing in the name of Jesus. Bring restoration in the name of Jesus. Lord God, allow them to fulfill their destiny in the name of Jesus. Lord God, mm. hmm. Lord God, don't let us get in the way of our promise in the name of Jesus. Lord God, don't let us get in the way of the promise. Lord God, let your divine will be done in 2021. Let your divine will be done in your people's households, in your people's finances, in your people's bodies, in your people's mind. Lord, let your divine will be done in 2021. Lord, let your divine will be done in 2021. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. Thank y'all so much for um, allowing this word to bless your soul, to bless your body. Go back to Genesis 18 and Genesis 21 um, for the birth of Isaac, um, how she held her son, how she held um, on and was able to birth the promise. There is a promise in you that God wants to get out of you, that God wants you to birth. So I pray that you will birth your promise. I pray that you will move from what if to what is. I pray that you will move from your possibilities to your realities. I pray that you will move from broken to whole in the name of Jesus. So I pray that you will have a blessed Sunday. Enjoy the day. Enjoy what God has for you. Go to Genesis 18 and Genesis 21, Colossians chapter 4, and Luke, mm, Luke, I think, Luke, where was I? Luke 18 and 27. With man, things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So be blessed in the word. Um, join me Tuesday if you are on Clubhouse. Join me for the success tank. 
I am a success coach, I'm a life coach, a love coach, and a leadership coach. Um, join the successtank.club. Join us on Telegram. Join us on Instagram. Be inspired. Be encouraged because you've got another chapter in you. You've got another chapter in you. So be encouraged. Believe more and believe better. See you on Wednesday. Bible study. Check. Look for me on Facebook. See you on Thursday. Power Lift Podcast, 8 p.m. Wednesday, 7.30 to 8.30 and Sundays, 10.30 and 11.30. I pray that this word blessed you. I love you, but know that God loves you more. Have a wonderful, blessed day, and I will see y'all next time. Bye. God bless. God bless y'all.